This is a video continuation of the series where we're showing you how to set up Morse code over the internet on Windows 10. We're still using Mumble and VoiceMeter, but this time we're using a software CW keyer called EHO CW. So instead of using a hardware CW keyer where you take the side tone out, connect an audio cable to the input of your sound card, either the mic input or the line input, we're going to generate the CW on the computer itself using a serial port or a USB to serial port adapter hooked up in the standard way and the, that information will be in the show notes. So I've already done so. I've got a paddle hooked up to my serial port, a USB serial port adapter, and we have dits and DAWs being generated by EHO CW and the output of VHCW goes to the voice meter aux over here. Just like before, we had it come in the mic jack, and because B2 was clicked, it goes out this virtual audio cable to the mumble input. Just to review that one more time, voice meter aux is the input for mumble, the device. The output of Mumble is a different sound card, the voice meter VAYO, that keeps the two channels, the input and the output, from feeding back on each other. Over here on the screen of voice meter, the VAYO is right here, and this comes in and the transmit goes out this aux channel, just like you see right there because B2 is selected. Now on the incoming from Mumble to my computer, I have B1 selected for this meter right there. And this is the voice meter VAYO, not the AUX, so just the other one, voice meter VAYO. And that means that anything that comes in this channel goes out the VAYO virtual audio cable where this is listening. Now this is listening to the AUX. That B2 is clicked so anything with B2 on it will go to this meter. So I have transmit and the receive VU meters. This one also has a scope. One unique thing about EHOCW, it also lets you hook up a straight key. And I just have it hooked up to the ring pin of the serial port and the DTR pin. And when those two close, you get a, a side tone like a straight key. So even though it's set up as an iambic keyer over here because it's on double and I'm using iambic B, if you, that's just using uh, the CTS and the DSR pins which connect DITs or DAWs to the DTR pin as your pedal closes each side. But if you could use the ring pin or the DCD pin to the DTR pin, you'll get a straight key. You could also hook up a bug and do the same thing. So I found that very nice. It also has its own CW keyboard independent speed that you can adjust from the pedal. So over here I have it set about 20. Here it's set at 30. So we also have a keyboard we can use. So it's all right here where you can adjust the settings to your preference. We have a transmit meter and we have a receive meter over here. And we're since we're just using the virtual inputs for voice meter, we don't have to worry about seeing these. So the screen for EHO CW covers it up just fine. You can still have access to the sliders and watch the VU meters over here to make sure everything's okay. Let me describe just a little bit about this master section. The last one is the aux. So you see I have it to set to minus 15. So that means that I can adjust this volume up and down, which is what I'm hearing. It won't affect what's being transmitted because that's going to transmit at minus 15 which on the mumble input 
is usually just about right here on, in its own VU meter. So I'll turn this down and you'll see what I mean here and we'll do it again. So it's too low and we'll turn it way up. So you can right click and then minus 15 hit enter and I can set it too if you want to set it with some precision. Go try it again. No, it's right back to where it should be, what's usually ideal. And the idea, again, is we're trying not to activate Mumble's own AGC circuit, which will affect how your CW wave looks. So if you put it put just enough volume before it activates, it will be as loud as it should be, and before the Mumble AGC starts to set it where you can't get it any louder on its input. So we try not to use that so that it doesn't affect how the CW wave is. For voice, it's not that critical. It really doesn't matter. But for CW, sometimes it's better that the waveform remains pure as it goes over the VoIP software. And it's using Opus as its VoIP codec. And let's take a look at the settings for EHO CW. We're using the WAS API voice meter aux so that it is, gets transmitted. But because this A1 button over here on the virtual input on the aux channel is clicked, I can hear it in the A1 channel where I'm using just the normal sound card. Because it's B2 is clicked, it goes over to here, the slash channel, the aux virtual audio cable to the mumble input. Now EHOCW has a bunch of sound card drivers that you can try. So you might experiment with those on your system. Maybe one of the other ones will work better for you. Over here is the serial port. So we click that and I'm using the DTR pin to ground everything. So I've enabled that. And my USB serial port adapter value uh, or its nomenclature is COM3 on my system, so that's why I have COM3 checked. If you had a MIDI, an Arduino or something, you could key EHOCW with it. You just tell it where your MIDI device is. And that works pretty well, as, but that'll be another video. Right now we're just using the USB to serial port adapter. So on EHOCW, we have paddles, we have straight key, and we have CW keyboard. The CW keyboard is independent speed, so you can take it up. And you can also slow down or speed up the keyer itself. So let's take it up just a little bit. And we'll slow it down. And as you as you can hear, it's uh, independent of the uh, keyboard speed. So that's very nice. So you can play around with that and set the speeds as you want, and it won't change. Over here, we have the audio frequency set to 700. You can change that. Just click the green arrow. Same thing for the rise and fall time. Just up and down, it goes from 0 to 10 milliseconds. Just click the green arrow, and you'll be able to change it. And I think that's just about it. The meters themselves are set. And it's just handy to see, make sure that you're transmitting and how strong it is in the receive. If anything's coming in, if you see the light but don't see anything here, you know there's an issue. So you have both your ears and the sound card output and also this meter input and software. That's just the basic idea here for using a software CW keyer instead of a hardware CW keyer to send Morse code of the internet on Windows 10. Thanks for watching.